Brian, let's meet your second wife. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest SNL sketches. Hey, Lewis, can I see you in my office for a sec, please? Ooh. That's the most hideous thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Your question is, what have you become? For this list, we're ranking the times SNL went all in with the controversial content. What do you think is the darkest SNL sketch? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Enhancement Drug. SNL is no stranger to parodying prescription drug commercials, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson can pretty much sell anything. So this sketch sounds like a home run, right? So I tried it, and it worked. This enhancement drug sketch starts off like any normal ad involving erectile dysfunction, but quickly spirals into a bevy of extreme side effects. Pop hallucinations, coma, trouble swallowing, decrease in semen, increase in semen. Including Johnson spouting off a random Hail Satan. near the end. What's even darker, though, is how the sketch comments on the opioid epidemic. So I grabbed him a little, and he goes, you're hurting me, sir. <laughs> Zentrax works. Zentrax isn't as dark as some of the other sketches on this list, but the implications are definitely there for sure. Number 9. The Tizzle Wizzle Show. The next entry on our list is short, but not so sweet. Hey, Tizzle Wizzles! I love you! The Tizzle Wizzle Show is a take on your average, everyday, colorful kids show, only with a few glaring exceptions. Knives, knives, all types of knives. Everybody pick out your favorite knives. For starters, there's knife play, unknown pills. The pills take hold of your mind and flesh. You're brave and strong. You don't fear death. Jammies! And a fight to the death in the dark. It all starts innocently enough with a jammy dance, but things get dark real quick with only guest host James Franco left standing after the Tizzle Wizzle show goes horribly awry. Fight to the death now, kill the lights! It's the sort of black humor that permeates a lot of SNL digital shorts, with this one being absolutely no exception. Number 8. Canteen Boy Okay, so this sketch was always in questionable taste, but it's even more problematic given the Boy Scouts of America's current state. Canteen Boy, come over here! Hang on a sec, pal. Tell us I... Got a bit of a situation over here. Adam Sandler's Canteen Boy character was a lovably dim but good-hearted assistant scoutmaster whose adventures take an incredibly dark turn alongside guest host Alec Baldwin. You know, it seems like the moment you get out of the city, all your problems just sort of fade away. The scene is played for laughs, but there's nothing funny about the implied situation in which Canteen Boy finds himself, as Baldwin's supervisor pushed the boundaries of propriety beyond the pale. Yeah, uh, right, I I'll take a rain check on that, Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> to be fair, Baldwin and Sandler are keen to make sure the jokes fly quickly enough to lessen the sketch's blow, but man, this is still something else. There you go, no more bugs. <laughs> Number 7. Shark Tank Sometimes an audience's initial reaction tells you all you need to know about where a sketch is going. I am Ibrahim al-Baghdadi. And I am Abdul Rakim. Towards the beginning of this Shark Tank parody, an audible gasp can be heard from the studio as the sharks bear witness to a group of religious militants. Our resources are spread too thin, and we need your expertise to help manage our growth. Oh, and there's also plenty of awkward silences, as the audience can't decide if they should laugh at this wildly dark and controversial material. So who's ready to invest in crushing the West? Even years later, we're not entirely sure if this is funny or if it was a bad idea right from the start. For that reason, I'm out. Number 6. Rosetta Stone the Rosetta Stone sketch implies so much reprehensible behavior within its scant two-minute runtime that we can barely believe it's even real. Rosetta Stone is the gold standard in language training. It's fast, easy, and it's your key to opening doors to new experiences. The sketch is actually a dead-on spoof of the commercials for Rosetta Stone's language learning software, only with one supremely dark twist. I'm learning Thai so I can go to Thailand for a thing. There's a group of sketchy-looking men all seeking to learn Thai to indulge in one of the country's most infamous stereotypes. I'm learning German so that I can pretend that I'm German while in Thailand. From the sweaty, dark room web surfing to the oversized and creepy glasses, it's a gross and button-pushing sketch that might leave some viewers picking their jaws up off the floor. You can learn great conversational phrases like, how much? Is that for the whole night? Oh my god, what have I done? Number 5. Sitcom Reboot Many of us are familiar with the trope of adult and child body swapping. We're talking about movies like Freaky Friday, Vice Versa, and Like Father, Like Son. He thought being a kid was pretty tough. He thought 
thought being a dad was too. Then a witch came along, did a magic spell, and now we've got a switcheroo. The switcheroo sketch takes things to an extreme that none of those movies touch, and probably for good reason. Dad goes to school, son goes to work. John Mulaney is honestly brilliant as a sitcom creator whose idea for a reboot is so troubling and offensive he's basically run out of town. Due to legal reasons, you shot it in Port-au-Prince. Yeah. <laughs> for a few weeks, and then even the Haitians were like, no dice. His interview on Hollywood Update reveals that he was forced to shoot Switcheroo in places like Haiti and Guyana, while at the same time exposing some deep-seated childhood trauma of his own. I want to tell our viewers that while he laughed after the clips, during them he stared at me with no expression. Number 4. Family Feud SNL has had a lot of success with their game show parodies over the years. Celebrity Jeopardy, anyone? Hey, Kenzie, my dear, how you doing? Hey, careful now. This includes the multiple times they've tried their hand at Celebrity Family Feud. But there was something profoundly dark about this installment pitting the Osmonds against the family of John Phillips, former singer of the Mamas and the Papas. We're riding high on life. <laughs> well, that's fine. Hey, Richard, I want to point out that we're also high in life, except also downers. And also wine. It all has to do with trauma and dysfunction as the sketch digs up skeletons from the closets of both families within the Family Feud framework. Something to do with your dad. First thing that comes to your mind. Uh. Beg him to put your bozo brother up for adoption. Hey, <laughs> you're the bozo, so cram it, clown. Jason Sudeikis does his best Richard Dawson impression, but not even his performance can stop the implications of this sketch from making our skin crawl. Mackenzie and her dad are always going off to play sports, and I'm like, can I come? And they're like, no, we like to do sports, just the two of us. Number three, Mr. Belvedere Fan Club. Call the next sketch on our list a product of its time. <laughs> The Mr. Belvedere fan club presents a group of people whose grip on reality is tenuous at best, as they describe increasingly troubled and obsessive behavior towards their favorite fictional television character. Well, all right, all those in favor who want to kill Mr. Belvedere, say aye. aye. Tom Hanks holds the sketch together as the straight man, while Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, and particularly Phil Hartman display mental health issues that would raise huge red flags today. I do think we need to do our exercises. What exercises? The exercise that helps keep the line between reality and fantasy a little less blurry. You'll see. The reactions at the time are comparatively tame, however, with the audience laughing along to the admittedly ridiculous premise in a way that undercuts how shockingly dark the sketch truly is. I should want to say hi to him nicely. I shouldn't want to keep him in a big jar in my basement. <laughs> Number 2. Meet Your Second Wife This entry is a great example of a sketch that's impeccably written, but dark as hell. Your lovely wife, Samantha, is in the audience today. Yay, Brian! <laughs> she seems great, for now. Meet Your Second Wife surprises its three male contestants by revealing to them situations whereby their otherwise happy marriages are succeeded by an increasingly young series of second spouses. One day, years in the future, she will be your second wife. <laughs> That's, that's impossible. <laughs> the reactions of Bobby Moynihan, Taryn Killam, and Kenan Thompson are brilliant, while hosts Tina Fey and Amy Poehler describe situations that honestly do happen in real life, with a gleefully black sense of humor. This is ridiculous. I am not leaving Elaine. You're right. You won't. Sadly, Elaine will pass away in a tragic kayaking accident. The reaction shots of A.D. Bryant, Vanessa Bayer, and Leslie Jones also hammer home the sketch's perverse punchline, making this a group effort in the best slash worst possible way. Toby, you're here tonight with your wife of 20 years, Deanna. That's right. Hey, baby. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Grow a guy. We don't know what's worse, the Chia friend or the gratuitous explosions. What have you become for the existential dread? I always wanted to be a mom, and now I have a beautiful daughter, and I've become exactly what I want. Ha <laughs> ha, good for you. Quick follow up, are you happy? No. Wilderness Lodge. The Yelp reviews didn't mention this. These guys are probably just some local eccentrics, you know? So I say, when the room's clean, we go up there and we pop a bottle of wine, huh? Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah? Almost Pizza. 
Did Kristen Wiig's character really want to feed her family that for dinner? I'll eat it. No! <laughs> what the f I never said it was pizza. <laughs> Chad horror movie. What can we say except, okay. I'm going to kill you, Chad. Oh, no thanks. Oh, I'm afraid you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. World's Most Evil Invention Here is the SNL sketch with a punchline so dark, we dare not speak its name. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, um, my name is Roy. Dwayne The Rock Johnson did have to, however, as he portrays a mad scientist with one boundary-pushing, taboo-breaking, absolutely most evil invention. I call it uh, Robo Chomo. The International Mad Scientist Society may be full of baddies, but Johnson's doctor, um, Roy, does them all in with a robot that's destined to be profiled on To Catch a Predator. Yes, 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 that's, that's exactly, exactly right. This, this guy gets it, you get it. Oh my god, no I don't! What's perhaps the most twisted aspect of the sketch, however, is the final reveal, when the entire thing just turns out to be an advertisement for White Castle. Things are always better with juicy beef and onion sandwiches from White Castle, America's medieval sandwich restaurant. Well, you truly outdid yourselves with this one, SNL. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.